Let's look at a few more examples of recurrences and solve them using the recursion tree method. Let's say t of n is 4 times t of n by 2 plus n squared. If we use the recursion tree method again, we'll start off with t of n, a single node in the tree. Then we will expand the tree by one level by replacing t of n by what's on the right hand side here. So we have n square here and four sub problems of half the size. So we'll have four children, each being t of n by 2. Then when we expand the tree by one more level, we will replace t of n by 2 by the corresponding right hand side in the recurrence, which would be, let's say we substitute n by n by 2 throughout. Then we'll get t of n by 2 is equal to 4 times t of n by 4 plus n by 2 square. That means each node of the form t of n by 2 will be replaced by a node n by 2 square and 4 children, each being t of n by 4. And the same applies for the other the other nodes. The other t of n by two nodes. They will have four children each. Each child being t of n by four, and the root will be uh, n by two square. So we'll substitute each of these four t of n by twos with these four subtrees. We can go on expanding the levels. In the next level, we will get t of n by 4 is equal to 4 times t of n by 8 plus n by 4 squared. So we'll have n by 4 whole square substituting t of n by 4 and we'll end up with more subproblems, four times more subproblems than the number of subproblems here, each with size n by 8. So we can go on doing this until we hit subproblems of size 1. So at the very end, our recursion tree is going to look like this. So if we define the levels starting from the top, which is level 0, we get these 4 nodes at level 1, these 16 nodes at level 2, and so on. At level 3, we will have nodes with a cost of n by 8 squared. At level i, we will have nodes with a cost of n by 2 to the power i squared. And finally at level h, we will have a cost of t of 1. The number of nodes 
increases by a factor of 4 at every level because each problem is divided into 4 sub-problems. So we have a single node at the very top, 4 nodes at level 1, 4 to the power 2 nodes at level 2, 4 to the power 3 nodes at level 3, 4 to the power i nodes at level i, and 4 to the power h nodes at level h. To evaluate p of n, we need to calculate the level sums. We need to sum the costs of the nodes at each level. So at level 0, the sum of the costs is just n square because there is a single node with a cost of n square. At level 1, we have 4 nodes, each with a cost of n by 2 square. So this is n square by 4 times 4, that's n square. At level 2, we have 4 square nodes, each with a cost of n by 4 square. So 4 square and 4 square cancel here and we again get n square. At level 3, we have 4 to the power 3 nodes, each with a cost of n by 8 square. And again, we get n square. Because 4 cube is 64, 8 square is 64. At level i, in general, we are going to get 4 to the power i nodes, each with a cost of n by 2 to the power i squared. Now, 4 to the power i can be written as 2 to the power 2i. And if we square 2 to the power i, we again get 2 to the power 2i. So, the numerator and the denominator here will cancel out and we will again get n squared. At the very last level, we will get 4 to the power h multiplied by p of 1. So we can write p of n as 4 to the power h times p of 1 plus summation of h minus 1 terms, sorry, su summation of h terms because there are a total of h plus 1 terms here, of which we have written the last term separately. The remaining h terms each have a cost of n square. So, this is going to be 4 to the power h times t of 1 plus n square multiplied by h. So again, we'll need to calculate the value of h in terms of n. And we can do that easily by observing that the size of the sub-problem reduces by 2, by a factor of 2, every time we create a new level. If when we created level 1, the, the, the original problem of size n was divided into 4 problems of size n by 2 then each problem of size n by 2 was further divided into a bunch of problems of size n by 4. So the size of the sub-problem is reducing by a factor of 2 at every level. So when level i was created, the size of the sub-problem there was n by 2 to the power i. And so when level h was created, the size of the sub-problem there would have been n by 2 to the power h. And by definition, h is the height of the tree which means the size of the sub-problem has reduced to 1 by the time we reach that level. So equating this to 1, we get h is log of n base 2. So if we substitute log of n base 2 in place of h here, we get 4 to the power log of n base 2 times t of 1 plus n square times log of n base 2. Four to the power log of n base 2 is n to the power log of 4 base 2. And this is n to the power log of 4 base 2. We can simply swap n and 4 here and the value of the 
term will remain unaffected. And n to the power log of 4 base 2 is nothing but n square. So this becomes n square times t of 1 plus n square times log of n base 2. So t of n is n square times t of 1 plus n square times log of n base 2. So this is the dominant term among the two. And so we can say that t of n is theta of n square log n. Now this example was similar to the first example we took of the recursion tree method where the level sums, the cost of, the sum of the costs of all the nodes at each level were constant down the tree. So we see that the level sums are n square for all levels except for the very last one where 4 to the power h is n square, the t of 1 need not be equal to 1. It will be some other constant in general. But apart from the very last term, which is a which, which kind of deviates from this pattern a little bit in terms of the constant factor, we still have n square all the way through, all the way down the tree. And so the value of t of n is nothing but n square times the number of levels in the tree which is approximately log of n. So the overall complexity is n square times log of n.